Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at the changing demand for global energy. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. We're going to start off with some stats about global energy use. Just over half of all energy around the globe is used for industry, manufacturing and food production. Around a quarter of global energy is used for transportation. Air travel in particular has seen huge growth in recent decades, but as countries have developed, so has car use. Around 14% is used domestically, this is in homes and includes heating, lighting and cooling systems, as well as running electrical appliances. And about 8% is used commercially, in retail, offices and hospitality. There are some key terms that are essential to this unit. Energy surplus, where the supply of energy available in an area exceeds the demand. Opposite of this is energy deficit, where the demand for energy exceeds the energy that is available in an area. We then have energy insecurity, where supplies of energy sources are unreliable. For example, they may be interrupted or prices may fluctuate and there is the potential for blackouts. And blackouts are power cuts resulting from a shortfall in energy production. Let's have a quick look at the global pattern of energy use. Energy supply and consumption are unequal across the globe, as you can see from our World in Data map on the screen. Qatar has the highest energy use per capita, with an average of 194,222 kilowatt hours per year. 100% of energy in the country is generated through burning fossil fuels. Half of the top 10 energy consuming countries are from the Middle East, with the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and Oman. In the UK, we use 30. In the Middle East, huge amounts of energy are used to cool homes and businesses, and the countries there source their energy almost exclusively from fossil fuels due to the fact that they are rich in oil resources. And because they have so many energy resources, energy prices are much lower, so they can afford to use more energy. Oil is the greatest source of energy supplied globally, accounting for about 30% all energy produced. This is down from 50% in the 1970s. Also in the top 10 per capita energy users are Iceland, Canada and Norway. Their huge amounts of energy are used to heat homes because of the cold weather. However, they are less reliant on fossil fuels. In Iceland, about 70% of energy is from hydroelectric power and almost 30% is from geothermal. In Canada, 61% is from hydroelectric power, 13% from nuclear and 10.5% from natural gas. And in Norway, 88% is from hydroelectric with another 10% from wind. The countries with the lowest energy consumption worldwide are found in Africa, probably unsurprisingly. We have Somalia, who only uses 217 kilowatt hours per year. That compares to the UK, where we're using over 30,000. Also right at the bottom is Burundi and the Central African Republic, both using less than 300 kilowatt hours a year. The top 10 lowest consuming countries are all found in sub-Saharan Africa, with a consumption at 500 kilowatt hours or lower. One of the main reasons energy consumption in these countries is so low is because they are suffering from energy insecurity. This is also linked to the low level of development, meaning that there isn't actually a need for a huge amount of energy, although this is a vicious circle as a lack of energy security hinders development. So let's think about why the global demand for energy has increased. The first and main reason is population growth. In 1950, the world's population was estimated to be around 2.5 billion people, increasing to around 6 billion by 1998 and 7 billion by 2010. On the 15th of November 2022, the global population hit 8 billion, which was considered a huge milestone in human development, taking just 12 years to increase by 1 billion people. The global population is predicted to hit 9 billion in 2037, taking 15 years to increase by another billion, which does show that overall population growth is starting to slow down. A growing population leads to higher energy consumption because more people means an increase in the demand for energy, 
more people using vehicles, more people using technology such as computers, mobile phones and consoles, and more people needing heat and light in their homes. There will also need to be construction of more homes, buildings that house services, infrastructure, etc. And these all take energy to build. However, we need to remember that the countries with the highest level of population growth are those countries who are already struggling with resources. They're already suffering food, water and energy insecurity. So therefore, population growth is likely to lead to more people experiencing an unreliable energy supply. For example, blackouts are a frequent occurrence across LICs and NEEs. Countries with the lowest gross national income per capita also tend to have the highest fertility rates. This means that global population growth is mainly concentrated in the poorest countries, usually in sub-Saharan Africa. In fact, population growth across the whole of Africa is 2.5% per year on average, compared to just 0.1% in Europe. The second reason is economic development. As countries start to develop economically, the population will have more money to spend on technology and electrical appliances for their homes, which require a source of power. In addition, car ownership will increase, so energy will be needed here too. Economic development will also see investment into manufacturing industries that use huge amounts of energy in production and a shift from subsistence agriculture to commercial farming which uses a significant amount of energy to operate machinery, power large greenhouses, refrigerate stock and for transportation. As wealth increases, so does the demand for energy and HICs have been consuming huge amounts of energy for these reasons for many decades. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on the change in demand for global energy. Thank you for watching.